Hey, welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. As we head into the weekend, I want to pretty much update you on the Daily DC updates today. It's very little, but it gives me a chance to go through the members' comments as well. But let's get into it before we get to the weekend. New photos from Batwoman Season 2. This is coming from Entertainment Weekly. This is exclusives from them. Check out exclusive new photos from the Batwoman Season 2 premiere. Like I said, I'm just going to keep saying that. No matter what we think about Batwoman, that's an awesome suit. I gotta, I gotta admit, that is an awesome suit, especially the newer version is an awesome suit, and I think she looks fantastic. Under the cow, she's vengeance. She's the knight. She's Batwoman, as EW is debuting exclusive new photos from Batwoman Season 2. The premiere is January 17th, so I have a lot of catching up to do. Very much so. So again, uh, when the uh, the drama returns, Leslie's Ryan Wilder, uh, a homeless martial arts expert, stumbles upon the bat suit after original Batwoman Kate Kane's Ruby Rose mysterious disappearance because she left the role. Uh, after years of feeling powerless within Gotham City's corrupt system, she views the cowl as a way to regain her power. So she takes it out for a spin which eventually leads to the moment depicted in the adjacent image. Um, but there are a few more images of some characters you probably already know. I'm still not familiar with yet. And then there's Bruce Wayne. Yeah, seriously, Bruce Wayne is in this. But that's not actually Bruce Wayne. But the potential that maybe later on Bruce Wayne could definitely appear. Um, this is actually Tommy Elliott, Hush right uh so he infiltrates wayne tower as bruce wayne so there's gonna be some things like that yes hush is in batwoman if you haven't already known that i haven't so because you know i haven't watched it yet but for people who are interested maybe this is the first time you're picking up on batwoman um season two it's gonna have uh bruce wayne and i think you know maybe this could allude to later on the actual bruce wayne could show up since you know because of the whole multiverse idea and how it's like you know, it, it's not, it's okay to have multiple Bruce Waynes. It's okay to have multiple Batmans. And so maybe this is their way to bring Batman into the CW universe in such a fashion that it could potentially happen. But um, this is uh, interesting to see this um, as, you know, we get into further who's going to get the Batman first. Like I'm thinking, are we going to see Batman for this one? We already saw Batman and Titans. We're going to get the Matt Reeves, the Batman. We're going to get Ben Affleck's the Batman. You know, potentially that could. But, you know, this is Batwoman. And, you know, when you tend to have that, like, Supergirl, Super uh, man, you will. It's hard, right? It's kind of hard to kind of have one outshine the other, especially having Batman outshine Batwoman. So, and I'm just guessing, and this could probably not be the case at all, but it would be pretty dope if um, how Supergirl introduced a Superman and uh, into the, the CW, they could do it in this fashion where Batwoman introduces the CW's version of Batman, and then we'll have a CW's Batman show. I don't know. I don't know how well that's going to work, but I definitely think that would be uh, pretty interesting and kind of enticing to fans, I think, for Batman fans, uh, definitely, if that could happen. Could Batwoman spin off a Batman show later on? Just saying, multiverse idea, it's not exclusive anymore to a certain Batman, and it's uh, at one time, it, they can be all on screen at the same time on different platforms. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see about that. The other news I want to talk about today is in regards to Birds of Prey. Uh, Margot Robbie had a, a pretty in-depth uh, interview uh, on from the Hollywood Reporter, uh, but there are certain aspects we can pick up from them that it are, are talking about DC. So this is the headline right here. Margot Robbie talks about Birds of Prey sequel. In regards to per Birds of Prey, really, she does not say anything. She just says, I don't know. Nothing imminent at this stage. Nothing worth mentioning. 
which I find intriguing. And I mean, it does sound like this is something they're not going to head. I mean, if there were, if it was successful, a Birds of Prey sequel would have been a no-brainer at this point. But, um, you know, maybe with the changing of the guard, the Birds of Prey not doing so well, regardless of all the different awards they've won in terms of the soundtrack and things like that uh, this year, because, you know, there was not much movies that came out this year. So, um it doesn't sound like she seems very confident in what could happen uh, with her character in sequels, uh, other than the Suicide Squad from James Gunn. Other than that, it kind of feels like Warner Brothers may have walked away from it in altogether, and maybe the next time we'll see her will be something else entirely. So we'll have to wait and see about that for Birds of Prey fans. I know that's kind of a downer, but uh, we'll have to just have to wait and see. She has nothing worth mentioning at this point in regards to Birds of Prey. All right. Well, let's get into Zack Snyder's Justice League because a lot of this news from DC is really not there. Like, uh, obviously, the, you know, they're, they're still filming the CW stuff. It's the holidays, and it's also Wonder Woman 1984. I can't talk much about Wonder Woman 1984 because, uh, you know, I'm really not looking. I haven't seen any spoilers. You know, that's the good part. I think a lot of spoilers, like there's no Mandalorian spoilers than, you know, anything at all, Wonder Woman 1984. I think people are pretty good at that. I think um, and I respect that. I, I, I'm thanking everybody for not trying to put the spoilers one 1984 on the timeline. But but there, they, that is coming out, and that is the next DC film. But people can help, but when they see Gal, they have to ask about Zack Snyder's Justice League. And so this is actually Josh uh, Horowitz, who is, you know, the, the man, the dude who asks great questions. In fact, he's the one who asked, um, uh, you know, Jason Momoa about, you know, the Snyder Cut twice, right? And so it's, it's inevitable that he's going to ask uh, other people about that as well. So this, I don't have a headline here, but this is actually Gal Gadot talking about uh, a little bit about Zack Snyder's Justice League. So here you go. The good news is apparently we're going to see some more of you soon because Miracle of Miracles, the Snyder Cut, is actually going to be released into the world. Have yeah. you shot some new stuff with Zach recently and what was it like? No, I didn't. I didn't okay. shoot anything. I didn't see anything and I, uh, I, I'm very much looking forward to watch to watch Zach's cut. Honestly, a while back, I thought this was just something the fans were always going to talk about. We were never actually going to see. Are you kind of surprised that we've gotten this far that Zach's getting to realize his, his vision? You know... In this world now, I'm not surprised by anything. <laughs> <That's fair laughs> if someone would have told me a year ago, you know, there's going to be a pandemic, and right. you know, now, now I'm not all bets are by off. Anything, yeah. But I'm very happy for him that he got yeah. to do his own version of the movie. So it's great to see that she's happy for him. Of course she is. She's already commented on before about Zack Snyder's Justice League. But the one thing that I got from that was that she's she didn't shoot anything. So um, I remember I remember the Hollywood Reporter article said that, you know, Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot and Ben Affleck and even Ray Fisher is going to be on set. And it turns out that Gal is not wasn't there. That Gal didn't have to have any additional photography in terms of, you know, Justice League. So um, and that would make sense. Right. Or you can kind of figure out something there because. If Zack Snyder truly shot additional photography for what would probably be the nightmare scenes, Wonder Woman is not, I guess, is not in the nightmare scene. So take from that what you will. <laughs> but uh, definitely uh, great to see that she's happy for it. And um, I can't wait to see what these people, after the movie comes out, what do they think about Zack Snyder's just like having it, seen it for the first time just like us so that's kind of cool but uh other things is that you know i want to know when that official poster drops right is the official poster coming we already talked a little bit about that but even more so now dave avery um has said uh in response to the culture nerd the culture nerd was asking jason Kilar, you know they're wondering is it called zack snyder it's just like a just league director's cut you know because i guess they don't they you know they're not sure um a lot of people are not sure what well, dave avery says you know once the official poster drops you'll see what title is on it and that's true 
And by then, we'll probably see what title is on it. And I can't wait to see that poster. I want to know what type of poster. Is it going to have dark side on it? Is it just going to be the Seven Samurai style? Um, but definitely having you mention official poster, that just gets you excited because January is going to be starting the marketing efforts for it. And I want to see all of that. I want to see, you know, like toys, like I've talked in the other show, toys and everything, but the poster itself. And on the poster, we'll reveal the official title uh, because people are like going back and forth. Zack Snyder's Justice League, Justice League Director's Cut, and things like that well um it looks like hbo max confirmed the title uh, this is coming from travis clark uh because he's saying the press release also refers to as the director's cut of justice league so he wonders if warner is changing the official title for a broader audience or just for this specific teaser well he inquired about this and max confirmed that justice league director's cut is only for this specific video the name remains Zack Snyder's Justice League. Who is Travis Clark? He's a senior media reporter for Business Insider, so he does have connections. He does reach out, and for, for this, he has got an official confirmation from HBO Max themselves that the official name for the movie is indeed Zack Snyder's Justice League, right? Because, um, like I said, you know, sometimes they do it for specific videos as part of marketing for this, uh, to just to market it in certain fashion, just as the director's cuts was only used for that specific video in that HBO Max reel, um, and that and that's it, right? So this this little thing right here, this was just to use for this specific video, but the actual movie confirmed by HBO Max to him is indeed going to be called Zack Snyder's Justice League. So that's it. That's it. That's all. That's that's all, right? So well, that's, uh, you know, I can't stress enough how all this back and forth has been driving me insane. But um, Zack said his name, it's called Zack Snyder's Justice League. Jason Kylar or Kilar, it says it's called Zack Snyder's Justice League. Now HB Max confirmed it to a reporter that it's indeed called Zack Snyder's Justice League. So there you have it. I think that could probably be the last time we're talking about that. Ah, uh, well, until the official poster drops, then we'll probably talk about it again. So, but where is that trailer? I want to know when that second trailer is coming. And this has been floating around, but I can't find out where this Vero post was, where this comment is. And to, according to this, this uh, named uh, Turkey Wayne says, hey boss, when can we expect the second trailer? We're dying to get it. And Zach Snyder indeed says, we're working on it. Now, I don't know where this comment comes from, and maybe you guys can try to see and find it, but it's been floating around, and I can't tell where it's coming from. But I do know there's probably a second trailer. It does make a sense to get an official trailer. Um, I think even McD says there's an official trailer coming out as well, and that's indeed part of that, uh, probably the start of that January marketing, I think. Um, but... You know, here's hoping we still get it earlier. You know, it's almost the end of the year. You know, be great nice Christmas surprise. I don't know. By the way, I'm just wondering that. Man, that'll be great to end off the year on that. But it'll be also great to begin the year on a, a tr second trailer, right? Because they can't just you know talk about Zack Snyder's Justice League. You know, a hundred percent when we have Wonder Woman 1984 coming out, and you know we don't want to take away. From that, I think Warner 1984 needs to be successful as well, deserves to be successful as well. You know, obviously, I haven't seen it yet, but uh, obviously, you know, Zack Snyder's a producer on that, and you know, he probably wants to help market that as well as his own movie. But at the same breath, a lot of people are really amped and hyped to see more of Zack Snyder's Justice League, and so I'm also wondering when we're gonna get that second trailer. And if this is, you know, current a current uh, comment, and then definitely he is definitely working on it as well. All right. Well, like I said, that was a short uh, day, but I want to have this opportunity to go into the members' questions. Like I said, if you want me to read your comment or question, join down below as a member, and then place that comment or question in this video so I read it on the next uh, Daily Show video. All right. The first comment of the day goes to Jimmy Howley. 
why do so many so many uh male feminists end up being creeps i've seen it up close strange phenomenon in a related thought i liked uh birds of prey it was goofy but a friend and i had the theater to ourselves do ping oh dull theaters and we had a great time it was a quite a tonal shift from the last movie you saw there joker it is a quite a tonal shift and it has great moments i think my favorite moment was uh, the police um you know the the police siege and i think that was one of the best parts of the movie uh and uh, there are great moments but they're also not so great and overall you know it sounds like we're not going to get a sequel but you know we'll see you know, stranger things have happened. Uh, Brandon Hall, while I am a major supporter of variety within uh, the cinematic uh, landscape of comic book ad adaptations, I love that Warner DC wants to go on, on a limb and usher in more R-rated content. And as we champion Zack Snyder's universal construct within the DCEU, I would love to see him take his vision and focus beyond the scope of The Dark Knight Returns. Would I love a Batman film done by Snyder? Hell yes. But I think if we truly consider it, we have had our fill of that particular Arc over the years, though the two live action films didn't fully render the graphic novel, we had it once. After Nolan skillfully navigated between the threads of Batman Year One and The Long Halloween, he used elements of the Frank Miller story in The Dark Knight Rises. You saw it again in Jay Oliva's animated adaptation, and then many of these elements drove BBS. I love the many takes on the iconic story, including the YouTube fan films, but we are missing out on a wealth of stories of the focus made solely on that as is, is if it is the holy grail of all Batman stories. The truth it the truth is, it was controversial at the time it was written because it flipped the idea of Batman on its ear. With the character suffering throughout the 50s and 60s as a campy character that had deviated from its grim depression era origins. The 70s attempted to bring him an edge, but the 80s was the birth of the Batman we closely follow today. I would hate to have Z uh, Snyder do a Dark Knight Returns movie with a different actors only to feel like more of the same. His ability is that of a cluster of directors, very few that come along once a generation. I know that this is his passion and what he dreams of having a shot at doing. I just can't shake the idea of wasted material out there. Untapped potential for a story we have seen numerous times already. I could think of a few I would like to see him tackle that would be that could be breathtaking, gritty, and yet beautifully rendered at the same time with imagery only Snyder could pull off flawlessly. Batman Null being one of them, Batman Earth 1 for another, there could be a whole series dedicated to the Earth when graphic novels come to think of it. Superman Earth 1 is one that I keep returning to. I don't know. I would even love to see them go back to the originals, the 1938 Superman or the first Batman and adapt them for a modern world, even form a Justice League around the Golden Age characters as another Elseworlds event. I fell in love with comics when my father gave me his childhood comics, and yes, I own the original Superman, Batman, and Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman comics. Whoa, that's awesome! Awesome. Uh, they must be in mid condition. <laughs> I would love to see these directors put spin on those tales in ways that would could would bring awe. That's just me, though. Much love and always take care. Oh, thank you, Brandon Hall. Definitely, yeah. Well, I think if Zack Snyder wanted to do Dark Knight Returns, then he has every right to do so. But yeah, uh, I think other directors and other people, if they want to do some things, there's very much uh, a lot of opportunity to pick whatever that you want to and create it, especially during this time of where multiverse uh, opportunities arise. So definitely uh, would love to see all that. Like really, I mean, it's like like in the animated, the DC animated, you know, before this, um, you know, Justice League War, and, you know, even during this time, there were different types of DC animation. You know, like the New Frontier had had a different type of animation and and things like that. So there was there was so many different types. Or so even the the one with the Batman, it was like a samurai, the Ninja Batman, a uh, Batman Ninja. Is that what it's called? And so there were so many different types and ways to see uh, different tonal shifts, and they don't actually connect with each other. But it was a great way to show different types of adaptations on screen um, and appreciate them for what they were so and are so i i generally i agree with you i i love to see all those different types as well uh mr stokes those channel just like my morning cup of coffee my morning isn't complete without watching your show my friend well thank you very much you normally hit my time frame at 11 30 a.m so i always make a perp uh make a purpose to have my first break of my work day to catch your show everything in life constantly being fine-tuned just like when the hitler youth uh, also known as joss whedon john berg and jeff johns messed with zach's true vision and derailed momentarily but now with course correction just like when patty jenkins said when just justice lee hit every dc director discarded and tossed that 
that out. Really looking forward to seeing on Christmas Day if the uh, Wonder Woman 1984 that they transition to BVS, and if so, possibly Aquaman 2 and the rest of the upcoming DC slate will now follow the same route. I know the Snyderverse will live in HBO Max, but what about the possibility of living it theatrically also? Exciting times, Cyborg moving on the big screen, please, Lord. What do you think, brother? Endless possibilities. I agree with you, uh, Mr. Soak's Soak's channel. Um, and, and yeah, uh, I think it's also coming out theatrically as well. I think Zack Snyder has pretty much hinted at that. It's going to come out theatrically. And so if it comes out theatrically, that takes the place of Justice League. And definitely, uh, they could definitely, uh, if, if possibility, continue that slate in, in that fashion as well. So there, there are um, lo logical possibilities for that to happen uh, now. Nicholas Perdikas, uh, Perdikas, Chris, DC will continue Zack Snyder's Just League or Whedon success cut? No, Whedon is gone. Like uh, even Patty said, they tossed that out. Uh, Zack Snyder says he'll erase that from reality <laughs> with his version of Zack Snyder's Just League. So it really, both of them pretty much just said it now that, yeah, they are, that's, they're, they're erasing that from canon and Zack Snyder's Justice League will be the new canon for that. Um, that's in my my mind is what they're trying to say. Eric Blake, it's worth noting that Amy Adams has proven not to be too afraid to stand up for herself and others, her stunt body double behind the scenes of sharp objects, for example. As such, one can help wondering even more how she dealt with Whedon. Way back when, before the All the Gods shirt, I had a bat flick esque dream where Amy, during an interview amid the Snyder Cup publicity tour, discussed her interaction with Whedon. She laughed as she noted, I didn't exactly fit his image of a red haired Spitfire. Hmm, well, to invoke bat flick again, I wonder if there's something more. And there could be, you know, I think it just depends on the interviewer asking the right questions. And when they do, um, definitely maybe they'll reveal a little bit more now. Eric Blake, it's worth noting that the only thing Whedon's actually said publicly about Josh Lee was him taking credit for the what everybody knows in the film. Make of that what you will. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, definitely. He hasn't said much at all, even about that. Amparo, um, hello, Chris. Zack Snyder's just Lee, more than the director's cut should be called uncompromised cut. Well, we know it's uncompromised, but uh, yeah, it, it will be called anything you want it. You want to call it, but you know, Zack Snyder uh, wants to call it Zack Snyder's Justice Lee. Why couldn't it be called Zack Snyder's Just League the director's cut? I don't know. You know, I mean, honestly, it's uh, I'm on the mind of whatever the the director wants to call it. They should be able to call it that. And if they if they've worked and he worked through it, so like the beginning of this in in this episode, it's indeed going to be called Zack Snyder's Justice League. Uh, Chan Samaru, I felt like Gal had to hold back just a little about her negative experience with Whedon until a time maybe after Wonder Woman 1984 when she can totally spill it. Knowing what we do from Whedon's ex-wife, I wonder if he made sexual advances or comments towards Gal during the reshoots. If it were any other sh Joe Schmo in the real world, he'd uh, already been exposed for all the scummy behavior he'd committed and there would be an article in the paper about it. Time enough, Joss got the reality treatment and have people come out openly and talk about how nasty he really is yeah i've heard about sexual advancements and things like that for other women on on different sets and stuff like that but you know um uh, you know gal gadol is she's a prof real prof like she is top-notch like professional uh political and professional and very um you know just you know she has she'll say what she needs to say and, and how she says it. it's it's just enough to know that there's something there but not enough to spill the whole thing. Um, maybe other people will come out and talk a bit further about what may have happened, maybe the stunt people or something like that. But everybody tries to keep their bridges and things like that. But essentially, I think you're right. Maybe when it comes out more and Whedon is truly, I'd say, canceled, you know, these people will speak more openly about it. And I think we're getting there. Uh, Lego Dinosaur. I've never understood why he, they went with HBO. The Warner Brother WB is a bigger brand. Here in the UK, HBO isn't a big thing. It would sell better if they rebranded as Warner Brothers, really. And it is. It's going to be Warner Brothers. So um, uh, HBO, it was part of, I mean, you can go back a, a year ago, right? It's like over a year, maybe. It's It's... HBO was a platform that was already doing streaming stuff. So they took that. This is, okay, well, this platform is already doing streaming stuff. 
let's adapt this and make it bigger. So that's what happened. And so they've created like HBO Max, right? Because they had HBO, HBO Go, HBO Now, now HBO Max. And so this is, okay, this is our new streaming service. Do we need to add more content, content on it? And at that time, Warner Brothers, before COVID, they're, you know, relatively successful. And so, you know, Zack Snyder had to, per, you know, promote this and say, you know what, we could do a series on this. It could be uh, content that'd be great on HBO because Warner Brothers wasn't listening. But now, you know, it's been a year, even more so, that now Warner Brothers is being chipped away, right? All the executives coming from AT&T that are promoting streaming, they want streaming, they're gonna put all their resources into streaming, they're, they're making Warner Brothers make things for streaming now that it be, the, it's consolidation, consolidation. And so, um, and now with COVID, streaming is key. Streaming is the thing that's uh, is winning out the battle. And so now it can be Warner Brothers. So yes, it's HBO, Warner Brothers um, is a bigger brand. They own, they, they make stuff for HBO Max, Max Original, stuff like that. So it's part of that thing. They didn't have their own streaming service, right? So they're utilizing uh, HBO. Uh, and now that the HBO is the HBO Max brand, you know, they want to get the Warner title. Maybe they, they want to get the Warner title in there. So maybe later on it'll be called Warner Max. Is it too late? I don't know. Maybe they don't need to do that. But yeah, the Warner is the bigger brand, but it's just a way of how they, um, you know, how Zach wanted to present it because Warner Brothers wasn't listening, but now they have no choice but to listen to their bosses and have Zack Snyder's Justice League out. Uh, the Rebel Prince. Hey, Chris, I just got out of the screen of Wonder Woman 1984 and spoiler free, it was breathtaking. Uh, Rebel Prince loved it from beginning to end. It's still fresh at the moment and over over time, I'm, his mind could change. But on first instinct, this is his favorite DCU film. I'm excited that you said that. Uh, I'm really, every, I love, I hear a lot of positive things coming out of it. It makes me even more excited, more excited to, I can't wait to watch uh, this film. Brandon Hayes, finally, Warner Brother understands that copying Marvel is not the answer to their problems. It's funny. Warner Brother Pictures already had a great plan in place. Their films were already uh, grounded, dark, real world, and R rated ish or edgy PG 13 ish. And then after BBS came out, they tried to course correct midway through and tried cop to top uh, to copy Marvel and the tone of the Deadpool movies, and it was a disaster. They tried to make their films shiny and fun and got mixed results. Now they're realizing dark and gritty is okay, just where we'd be now if they just maintained their original plan under Zack Snyder and David Ayer. It's painfully obvious that Ben jumped ship after he was embarrassed on those Justice League reshoots. Now we have a young emo boy. Batman, come on, Warner Bros. Give us the older curse asking Cursing ass kicking Batman. Thanks, we thankfully we'll see this in the Snyder Cut. Uh, Warner Brothers finally un understand the error in their ways. It's funny because the whole Joss Whedon fallout is not over. When the raw and uncut truth about those reshoots and what happened is unveiled, man, those that's going to be a game changer. I'm sure our jaws will drop once we know it all. Ray Fisher is hero. He lit the match. He put it all on the line to hold Joss uh, Whedon, Johns, and Berg accountable. It's strange because these words inclusive lead me to believe some racist stuff happened. I'm curious to know what Whedon, Johns, and Berg did to the cast and crew to make them rally behind Fisher like this. Jason Momoa also took a risk and supported Ray openly. Now Gal Gadot feels comfortable lending her voice too. Let's see who else will jump in. If Ben, Ezra, and Cavill break protocol and spill some of the beans too. Um, oops, sorry. I didn't mean to unlike that. But um, yeah, definitely... I think, like you said, there are probably a lot more coming down the pipeline, uh, especially if they get to do, you know, more traditional press junkets um, like how they're doing now uh, with Wonder Woman 1984. But this time with Ben, with Ezra, with Cavill, they have no choice but to answer about what happened at Justice League. And they're going to get those questions regardless if, if they actually do it. Um, and I think more and more come out as we get closer to um finally watching just uh and i think that's it that's it for all the comments and questions thank you so much for putting that in um and definitely yeah i hope you all have a wonderful weekend it's gonna be a crazy weekend sunday deck the hall of justice i'm gonna be on the dave the film junkie show with none other than zach snyder so 
Dave, Zach, and I are going to be on the De Deck and Hall, <laughs> Deck Halls of Justice, Dave the Film Junkie show live, and it's going to be fun. So stay tuned and uh, make sure you participate in all the decks of the Hall of Justice. It's pretty much all day, including the international uh, ones as well. Uh, um, they also have their own decks of Halls of Justice as well. So uh, it's going to be a crazy weekend. It's definitely going to be uh, crazy, but fun weekend so thank you so much for watching like i said if you love this daily dose of dc content and movie shows and video games please click the like button hit that subscribe button ring that notification bell keep this hot dog light on and i'll see you next time